All right, Abba Yahuwah, we bless you tonight. We thank you for your son, Yahushua. We thank you for all that you do for us and how you promise to make all things beautiful in your time. And we just love and appreciate that. And we want to show our love for you by keeping your commandments. And two code is one of your commandments. And we just bless you and thank you. B'shem Yahushua. Amen. All right. We studied about the earth. I am going to make it beautiful. Studied about Job. I made Job beautiful. So about Yosef, uh, he made him beautiful. But tonight we're going to look at the bride and how he's going to make her beautiful. And so uh, he's always trying to make us beautiful and not uh, as we think with our bad brain. We think our bad brain is trying to hurt us and, and take us down when he's actually trying to make us beautiful. We got to remember that he's uh, whatever he does he's trying to make us what yeah and so we have to buy the truth and what because it's priceless never forget that buy the truth sell it now because it is priceless so hands up y'all makes all things beautiful in his time all right let's go to ezekiel chapter 16 and uh this is kind of a story of our life how he found us Yeah, verse 1. Uh, Ezekiel chapter 16, beginning in verse 1. Again, the word of Yahweh come to me, saying, Son of man, cause Jerusalem to know her abominations, and say, Thus says the master Yahweh unto Jerusalem, Your birth and your nativity is from the land of Canaan. Your father was an Amorite, and your mother a Hittite. And as for your nativity, in the day you were born, your navel was not cut, neither were you washed in water to supple you. You were not salted at all, nor swaddled. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. And so we see that uh, where he found her, it wasn't in a good place, was it? But his whole goal is when we're at our lowest place to find us and make us beautiful. We saw it with the earth. We saw it with Job. We saw it with Joseph. And we're going to see it tonight with the bride because he wants things beautiful. And uh, because he wants things beautiful, guess what he's going to do? He's going to get things beautiful. Let's go to Isaiah 55 and 8 again through 11. Isaiah 55, beginning in verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, and neither are your ways my ways, says Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down and the snow from heaven, and does not return, but it waters the earth and makes it bring forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sin. And one of the words went out of his mouth, he makes all things beautiful in his time. So it's got to come to pass, right? And that's what we got to realize. Everything he's doing in and around our lives is to make us beautiful. Sometimes uh, it's like a uh, people go to the surgeon to get their nose fixed or <laughs> whatever. So he's a surgeon, and sometimes we need our bad brain fixing. He has to go in there and cut a little this and cut a little that. But he, how does he do it? Through situations and circumstances. I'll say it again. How does he do it? Through situations and circumstances. He causes us to uh, uh, be made beautiful because once we understand his master plan, it's a lot easier or better to get in line. Amen? And so he found her. She was naked. She wasn't swaddled. Her navel wasn't cut. She's in pretty bad condition, isn't he? And that's the way he found us. We were, we were uh, in the world in bad condition. But we came to him, and he began to do what? Make us beautiful. All right, read a little further. No, I pitied you. Oh, this is Ezekiel 16 and 5. No, I pitied you to do any of these unto you, to have compassion unto you. But you were cast out in the open field to the loathing of your person in the day that you were born. And when I passed by you, 
I saw you polluted in your own blood. And I said unto you when you were in your blood, live. I said unto you when you were in your blood, live. See, so he found us. We were dying. And he came by and rescued us. I can look over my life. I was a drug addict. I was here, there, everywhere. And he came and rescued me. I was just like this bride. I was poor, naked, and blind. In fact, that's what he says. Let's go to uh, Revelations 3, and um, it's about 12, talking about the Laodicea church. He said, you think you're rich, but you're actually what? Poor, naked, and blind. Uh, Revelations 3, beginning in verse 17. Because you say I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire that you may be rich, and white raiment that you may be clothed, that the shame of your nakedness does not appear, and anoint your eyes with eye salve that you may see. So he was he told her, look, you're blind, you're naked, and you're poor, but I want to do what? Make you beautiful. So he said, go get some gold, go get some white raiment, and put something on your eyes so that you could see correctly. Sometimes we don't see correctly. We see the way we see, but we don't see reality. Reality is different from how we view things. And we got to view things the way he sees it. That is the true reality. And everything he's doing is to make us beautiful. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes it don't feel good. Sometimes it seems like we're going backwards instead of forward, and we're giving all our energy to go forward when he wants us to go backwards. Sometimes we're going down like Yosef. He was just, no matter how good he did, he just kept going down. But he's got a master plan, and he's working it to a T. And so he found the bride. She was naked and poor and wasn't swaddled, or the navel wasn't cut, and all these things. She's in bad shape. But look what he said to her next. Go back to Ezekiel, please. I, Ezekiel 16, chapter, I mean, uh, chapter 16, verse 7. I have caused you to multiply as the bud of the field, and you have increased and waxed great, and you are come to excellent ornaments. Your breasts are fashioned and your hair is grown, whereas you were naked and bare. Now when I passed by you and looked upon you, Behold, your time was the time of love, and I spread my skirt over you and covered your nakedness. Yes, I swore unto you and entered into a covenant with you, says the Master Yahweh, wow. and you became mine. See, he's looking for us to get beautiful, but he's going to do the beautifying. Can I say it again? He's the one going to do the beautifying because he knows what's beautiful. And I'll tell you what's beautiful. Obedience, humility, and faithfulness, that's beautiful. In his eyes, that's beautiful. And that's what we got to learn to do, to be obedient, to be humble, and to be faithful. Because those are the things, three prerequisites, that he's looking for all his servants, and that's what makes them beautiful. Once we learn to obey, uh, it said in uh, 1 Samuel, I think it's 15, to obey is better than sacrifice. See, so he's looking for obedience, and we do the same thing. As parents, when our children are obedient, that's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Can I get an amen? See, but when they go the other way, that's kind of ugly, or I should say ugly. Amen? Did you find that one? Right there. Nope, nope, nope. 22, yeah. Yeah, I just had to go down a little. All right, 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And Samuel said, Does Yahweh have as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of Yahweh? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rent. See? Obedience is beautiful in his eyes. And so we got to learn to be obedient to his will and way. Sometimes it seems like we're going the wrong way, but he knows the way. Uh, in Job, it says, there's a way that the lion's whip is not trotted. 
No bird has seen it. In other words, they haven't seen Yahweh's way. Somebody find that looking for lion's whelp. It's not think it's in the book of Job. And see, that's a place that where we haven't been before. And where we haven't been before, what do we need? We need a pathfinder. We need somebody to lead us and guide us. Uh, Job 28 and 8. Sort of 7. 7. There is a path which no fowl knows, and which the vulture's eye has not seen. The lion's whelps have not trodden it, nor the fierce lion passed by it. See, there the, he's got a path that we don't know nothing about. And we got to travel that path. And so when we don't know the way, what do we do? We lean on the pathfinder. Yahweh is the pathfinder, and he's leading us to beauty. That's all he wants out of us is to be beautiful. Where at? Within first and within without. So you can be beautiful without and just as ugly, ugly as you can be on the inside. We've met a lot of people who are beautiful on the outside. But when you look at the inside, you don't even want to be around them. And so uh, because of our... Uh, our um, stiff neckness and rebellion, sometimes he has to turn uh, his face from us, Isaiah 54 and 7. Uh, Isaiah 54 and 7. For a small moment I have forsaken you, but with great mercies I will gather you. Next verse. In a little wrath I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on you says Yahweh, your redeemer. See, why did he hide his face? Because people didn't want to be made beautiful. They wanted their own will and way. And so our own will and way is not his way. And we have to understand that. He knows how he wants us to go. He knows what it takes to beautify us. And so we just got to get in line with him. And uh, let's go to Jeremiah 6.16. This is a reason why he was telling them to seek the old paths. Jeremiah 6 and 16. Thus said Yahweh, stand in the ways and see and ask for the old paths. Where is the good way and walk therein? And you will find rest for your soul. But they said, we will not walk therein. See, they would have found beauty for their souls if they'd have had it just went back and looked at the blueprints. I'm so glad Yahweh showed us how to go back and look at the blueprints. See, that makes us beautiful. Other people don't like it, but think we're uh, weirdos, and that, but that's okay. I'm good with that. I've been a weirdo all my life, so it's nothing new. But he said, go back, and this is the way you make yourself beautiful. Not the way you're on the trail, the, the, the path you're on, that won't make you beautiful. But if you go back and look at the old past, that will make you beautiful. But they said, we will not. They wanted their own will and way. And sometimes we're like that. We want our own will and way. Even though he takes all this time to make us beautiful. He's patient with us. What did he say about Israel? They bucked against him how many times? Ten times. And he still showed love for him. He still got him to Canaan's land, didn't he? See? So that's what he's trying to do for us. Sometimes we, we, we don't like the pain. We don't like the fire. But the fire is good for us. All right, go back to Ezekiel. All right, Ezekiel 16 and verse 9. Then I washed you with water. Yes, I thoroughly washed away your blood from you, and I anointed you with oil. I clothed you also with broidered work, and shod you with badger skin, and I girded you about with fine linen, and I covered you with silk. I decked you also with ornaments, and I put bracelets upon your hands, and a chain on your neck. And I put a jewel on your forehead, and earrings in your ears, and a beautiful crown upon your head. Wow. See? Look where he found her. Now what he's done to her, he's made her beautiful. 
That's what he wants to do to you and me, to make us beautiful. And faithfulness, obedience, and humility will get us there. See, he wants us beautiful. What's beautiful? Crossing the finish line and hearing, well done, thou good and faithful servant. There has been faithful over a few things. Now I make you ruler over many. That's beautiful. That's really, really beautiful. Hands up, y'all. Makes all things beautiful. And so uh, uh, he's working day and night trying to get us to a place that he wants us to be. But let me show you something. Sometimes we want to jump out of the fire. But his fire is only there to do what? Purify us and make us beautiful. You don't want to jump out of the fire because when you jump out of the fire, you become a cold clinker. See, what is a cold clinker? It's somebody that was in the fire, jumped out of the fire because they didn't like the fire. But his fire is there to refine us, to make us beautiful. And so when you jump out of the fire, you think everything's all right because you're still warm. And it, the heat goes down real slow. So it's like a frog. How do you boil a frog? Turn up the water slowly. Well, the fire is going down slowly, so you think it's all right. But you've taken yourself out of the source that wanted to make you beautiful. Now you're sitting over here, a cold clinker. You don't want to be around those that are on fire. You want to be a cold clinker. But you're only going to get better in the fire. I'm going to see that. We're only going to get better in the fire. He's a refinished fire. He said, it's not my word of fire. So he puts us in this fire because he wants the gold and the silver. All these precious things has to be made and acquired under fire and much pressure. So don't run away from it. Accept it that he's going to make it good. Romans 8, 28, and we know that all things work together for good, to them that love Yahuwah, to them that are called according to his purpose. And so we don't want to become a cold clinker, jump out of the fire. He put us in the fire for a reason. Peter said, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials, which is to try you as though something strange happened to you. His fire will not kill us. Uh, it only makes us better, makes us beautiful. So don't jump out of the fire and become a cold clinker. In other words, you don't want to be around those. But we need to learn. That's where I need to be because that's where the fire is. Amen? Remember, his fire is only there to help us. To mold us. See, it's easy to mold something when it's, uh, you can see uh, some of those steel works when it gets so hot and you, the whole piece is, is, is red, it's easy to mold it then, isn't it? Well, where did that idea come from? <laughs> it's his idea. He says, I'm a consuming fire. So he gets us so red hot, fiery trials, and we're just hot. And that's when he can mold us into the image of his son, Yehushua. That's important in this journey. Amen. And so he wants us beautiful, but don't get out of the fire. Stay in the fire because the fire is good for you. What if the Hebrew boys would have said, don't give, let's get us out of the fire? Would they have seen the miracle of the sun showing up? See? Don't jump out. Stay in. I, 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 it can be painful. It can be humili humiliating. And it, it may seem like... Uh, Wow, he's trying to take me out. No, he's trying to make you better. We, we, gotta, we must remember that. Stay in the fire because that's where he can, that piece of steel is so uh, uh, hot. And the, the uh, uh, man, and he's so, it's that piece of steel is so hot. And the, uh, uh, what you call the guy with the, what? the blacksmith. He begins to beat that piece into a horseshoe or whatever he wants it to be, but it has to be hot in order for it to be molded. He wants to mold us in this, like his son, Yahushua. Let's go to uh, 
First John 2, 4 through 6. First John 2, beginning in verse 4. He who says, I know him, and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whosoever keeps his word, truly the love of Yahweh is perfected in him. By this we know that we are in him. He who says he abides in him ought himself also to walk just as he walked. See, he had to go through the fire. We got to go through the fire. See, in fact, there's a scripture, I think it's Isaiah says, and when you go through the fire, you will not be burned. See, that's a special fire. He's not trying to take us out. He's just trying to get it hot enough to mold us. How many see that? You don't want that steel just to be nothing. You want it in, in a big gob so that when you the, the blacksmith starts with the puts that thing on the anvil and he can hit it. See, it hadn't lost all its substance. It has some kind of form, but not the form that the blacksmith wants it to be in. How many see that? And so don't jump out of the fire. Stay in the fire. Don't become a cold clinker. We've seen so many people jump out the fire and they become a cold clinker and they think, oh, it's all right. I'm still a little warm, but you don't want to be warm. What did he say about people that's warm? Isaiah what? Okay. Isaiah 43 and 2. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon you. See, it just wants to transform us. How many see that? Can I get an amen? You see that? You can walk through the fire and not be burned. Hands up. Y'all just trying to make us beautiful. That's all. When we go through the fire, he just said, uh, you can go through the fire and not be. That's a miracle. Because the scripture says, can a man take fire in his bosom and not be burned? <laughs> No, he cannot. But if we are walking upright, and if we are obedient and humble and faithful, we can walk through the fire and not be burned. That's awesome. That's a great creator. Amen. He's showing his power just like the three Hebrew boys. They said even the scent didn't get on them. And so let's just keep walking even though we're in the fire. Let's, let's keep walking. Because he's, he's got his hand. He's got the anvil out, and he's finna make us into something. So, remember, buy the truth, sell it not, because it is priceless. All right, go back to Ezekiel chapter 16 for a little bit. Ezekiel 16, beginning in verse 13. You were decked with gold and silver, and your raiment was of fine linen and silk embroidered work. You ate fine flour and honey and oil, and you were exceedingly beautiful, and you prospered into a kingdom. And your renown went forth among the heathen for your beauty, for it was perfect through my comeliness, which I had put upon you, says the Master Yahweh. Wow, look at all he did to make her beautiful. Look at the times he's put us in the fire to make us beautiful, and we want to jump out. We wanted to what? Quit. If that's the way it's going to be, I ain't going no more. That's a bad brain. I'll say it again, that's a bad brain. Because if Yahuwah be for us, who can be against us? We don't care who's coming against us. When he's through, it's going to be beautiful. I tell you, it's going to be beautiful. And that's what we got to understand. We got to go through the fire. We got to go through the fire. That's his own, that's, that's his mode of operating. You got to go through the fire. I got to go through the fire. No, you can't be in his house unless you go through the fire. Because he wants to get rid of all the impurities in us, all the frivolousness in us, all the things that we think is a big thing and ain't really nothing in his eyes. Uh, there's a scripture in Daniel where it talks about uh, uh, we should be made white. See, he, he wants to cleanse us so we can be beautiful in his eyes. All right, Daniel 12 and 10. Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand. 
but the wise will understand. Daniel 9 and 10? 12 and 10. 12 and 10, okay. So, do you understand what the scripture is saying? Many shall be purified and made white. And what's the next word? Tried. See? Say it, say it in your... Tried. It's the Hebrew word saraf, and it it literally means refined. <laughs> oh, oh, we start. Are you starting to see a pattern now? How he makes us beautiful. You're gonna go through the fire, but you won't be burned. You'll be like the Hebrew boys. <laughs> You'll be like the burning bush. Amen. Okay. He got Moses' attention. He didn't want to burn the bush up. He just wanted to get Moses' attention. Sometimes he puts us in the fire to get our attention. Listen to what Paul said about it. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 4, 16 through 18. All right, 2 Corinthians 4, beginning in verse 16. For which cause we faint not? But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. See, Paul calls it what? A light affliction. When we look back on our journey, even now we can look back at our journey and say, oh, that wasn't bad as I thought it was when I was in it. Because we bucked and cried and mumbled and thought about quitting and all, all, all kind of things. We had the bad brain bad. Bad brain bad. <laughs> but, see, he, he just wants to make us beautiful. Check this out. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave what? To make us what? Beautiful. To be recompensed or uh, reconciled back to him is beautiful. Would you say that? Say, he, he died to make us beautiful so we could go back to the Father. Wow. That's how much he loves us. Psalm 48 and 2. Psalms 48 and 2 says, Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion. On the sides of the north, the city of the great king. See? What's he looking for? Beauty. He's got a beautiful city. Read it again. Situation. The joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Romans 10, 15. Romans 10 and 15. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the glad tidings of peace. And bring glad tidings of good things. And what did they do to the persons that brought the glad tidings? They killed them. That's what Yahushua told them. He said, you say you wouldn't do it. But you're worse than your fathers because you killed the prophets. And they brought them the truth. They were trying to make them beautiful in the father's eyes. But they didn't want it. Sometimes we're like that. When the messenger brings the truth, we want to kill the truth. Oh, that ain't right. That, hey, if it's coming out of the book, it, it's right. <laughs> Amen? Beautiful for situation is Mount Zion in the sides of the north. Beautiful for situation. First Chronicles 16, 29. Chronicles 16 and 29. 
Give unto Yahweh the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship Yahweh in the beauty of holiness. See, holiness is beauty. See what it, see how see how he defines beauty? It's just not a physical thing. It's an act of doing his word. James said, be ye doers of the word, not hearers only. So doing his word is beautiful in his eyes. And whose eyes count, mine or his? His. So let's do his word because that's beautiful because it's already settled in heaven. And once it's written, it cannot be it cannot be changed or altered. I don't care who you are, how much knowledge you got, how much money you got. We heard about some rich ones, and they tried to go down to the, the Mariana Trench, and we don't hear about them no more, do we? Money couldn't save them, could it? See? But obedience, humility, and faithfulness can makes us beautiful. How many remember the story of Vashti? She, she was a beautiful queen, wasn't she? But when the king called her out there to see her beauty, what happened? She refused. So what happened to Vashti? Sent her down the road. And here comes this beautiful Hebrew girl, Esther. And when he saw her, he said, wow, how beautiful. And even back then, when they were go before the kings, they had to send six months in oil and six months in uh, perfumes before you could even go before the king. He was looking, but we serve the king of the universe, so what do you think about us? <laughs> See, obedience, humility, and faithfulness is like the perfume. It smells so good to it. It's like the oil. It's so beautiful to him. See, that's what we got to realize. How many see that? And so Esther, her gift was her beauty. What did I tell you about your gift? Your gift would make room for you and bring you for what? Did it do it for Esther? You might be right. Hone your gifts. Work on your gifts. Whatever it is, work on them. Because that's how you become before great men. That's what the scripture says. That's how you do it. And Esther, here she comes, and the king saw her. Wow. And he took her out of all those other people. He chose Esther because of her beauty. See, that's what the father wants. Let's go to um, 1 Samuel, uh, I think it's 16. Well, uh, Yahweh told Samuel, uh, man looketh on the heart, but he looks on the what? Seven, 17? It's, it's the, okay. 1 Samuel 16 and 7. All right, 1 Samuel 16 and 7. But Yahweh said to Samuel, do not look on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For Yahweh does not see as man sees, because man looks on the outward appearance, but Yahweh looks on the heart. Wow, what a great statement. What a great statement. You can be ugly on the outside and beautiful on the inside. Because Yahweh's looking at the what? The heart. Wow, that's an awesome statement. Some people are worried about the outward appearance. We need to be concerned about our inward appearance first. Amen? Because that's what he's looking for. And so uh, he wants to uh, make us beautiful, but sometimes we, we don't want what he wants. And then he has to get out the licking stick. And sometimes he'll throw us in the fire a second time or a third time because we refuse his way. And so he 
He's going to get his way. He, we might as well realize. He says, so shall my words be that go forth out of my mouth. They shall not return to me, Lord, that it accomplish what I please. They shall prosper in the thing whereunto I send it. So he wants to make us beautiful. He doesn't care how many times he has to put us through the fire. Does the gold care how many times he puts him through the fire? Nope. All he wants is the pure stuff. Remember, this whole, we thought, we think the city, the streets are made of gold, but the whole city is made of gold. You need to read that again. The city is made of gold. And how do you get gold? Fire. And so uh, Esther, she becomes queen, and she helps her, 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 uh, the Yehudim, and it was because of her beauty. So whatever gift we have, let's use it because it will make, may even make someone else beautiful. Amen? Some of the things we do will help somebody else become obedient, humble, and faithful. Because they can see what I used to be to where I am today. That's beautiful. I, I should get an amen from all of y'all. From what we used to be, from where we are today, we are beautiful. But look how long it took. Look at the journey we've been on. Sometimes we had tears running down our face. We've been stabbed in the back, ostracized and criticized, lied on, and how does it go? And told we were wrong. But with, but the father says, you're beautiful in my eyes. And his eyes are on one count. Okay. Yeah, the whole city's gold. <laughs> Not just the streets, the whole city. Uh, Revelation 21 and 18. And the building of the well of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold like unto clear glass. The whole city <laughs> is pure gold. Wow. That's beautiful, isn't it? But sometimes people let their beauty get to them like Hasitan. He let his beauty get to him. So we don't want to do that. Uh, let's read Isaiah 50 and 2. Wherefore, when I came, was there no man? Oh, oops, oops excuse me. Psalms 50 and 2. Oh, okay. Simple enough. Psalms 50 and 2. Out of Zion, the perfection of beauty, Elohim has shunned. Now, I asked you a question. Does Zion look like is perfection of beauty today? No. They don't like the Father, neither do like the Son. They don't like Moses. So how can they be beautiful? Yahushua told them in Matthew uh, 23 and something. Oh, he said, you will not see me again till you say, Baruch, Abba, Bashem, Yahweh. All right, read it. That's Matthew 23 and 39. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth. Until you say, blessed is he that comes in the name of Yah. See, they refused to be made beautiful. He came to make them beautiful. He came to reconcile him, but the people, his own people first and the rest of us back to the Father. But they refused to be made beautiful. We have people like that today. They think, I want my own will and way, and I don't want, care what it costs, but it's going to cost you your life if you're not careful. Amen? Did we read uh, Psalm 48 and 2? Okay. We did? All right. All right, let's read the story of the 20, uh, Matthew 25 and 1, the 10 virgins. Uh, 
25, Matthew 25, beginning in verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom comes, go out to meet him. Then all the virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps have gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came the other virgin, saying, Our master, our master, open to us. To which he answered and said, I, don't, uh, I say unto you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man comes. So, why didn't they get in? They weren't beautiful. The oil would make them beautiful. Remember he told them in Revelations, Buy me what? Oil. So they weren't beautiful, so he shut the door on them. So we got to learn. It's his way or the highway. He doesn't care who you are. It's his way or the highway. Because he only wants to make us beautiful. Can you imagine what heaven's like? Everything's beautiful there. Everything is beautiful there. The whole city is made of gold. The streets of gold and pearls and all these things that we uh, highly, it, they walk on it. <laughs> all right. Let's go a little further. Um, let's go to this one Proverbs 31 30. Get our understanding here. Uh, Proverbs 31 and 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman that fears Yahweh, she shall be praised. See, now that's what's really beautiful. A woman that fears Yahweh. That's be that's true beauty. Our beauty is what? Vain. There used to be an old song. Beauty is only skin deep. <laughs> it's only skin deep. But inward beauty, wow. It's heartbeat. Which do you want? And then, uh, let's read about the bride a little bit. I, I've been skipping her, but let's, let's take, take a look at her in the Song of Solomon. The bridegroom comes knocking on the door. In Song of Solomon 1 and 9, and what she tells him? Yeah, I believe it is. Uh, two, maybe two in that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, five. Oh, I get that one. Start at verse one. beginning in chapter 5 verse 1 I'm come into my garden my sister my spouse I've gathered my myrrh with my spice I've eaten my honeycomb with my honey and I've drunk my wine with my milk eat O oh friends drink drink abundantly O oh beloved I sleep but my heart wakes it is the voice of my beloved that knocks saying open to me my sister my love my dove my undefiled for my head is filled with dew and my locks with the drops of the night. I've put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I've washed my feet. How shall I defile them? Sounds like Vesti, don't you? <laughs> Here the bridegroom comes to look for his beautiful bride, and she says, ah, I just took a bath. Just wash my feet. I don't, get, I don't want you touching me tonight. <laughs> and what did he do? He left. 
Let's go a little further and look at the bride. Uh, let's go to chapter six. And uh, verse four, start there. All right, Song of Solomon 6, beginning in verse 4. You are beautiful, O my love, as Tirzah. Comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Turn away your eyes from me, for they have overcome me. My hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. Your teeth are as strong as a flock of sheep which go up from the washing, whereof every one bears twins, and there is not one barren among them. As a piece of pomegranate are your temples within your lot. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bore her. The daughter saw her and blessed her. Yes, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. Listen to this. Who is she that looks forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? She, I, was, she was beautiful, wasn't she? She was so beautiful, nobody compared to us. And when he's through with us, we're going to be beautiful. Because the rest of the world will not be able to be compared to us. Because we are looking like his son. Wow, that's awesome. And so that's all he wants to do is make us beautiful. But it's how he does it that confuses us sometimes. To cause us to get in the mother grubs. To call us to have the bad brain. Can I get an amen? So let's learn to see his pattern how he does it, and we'll be well off. Amen? Revelations uh, 19, 7 through 9. Revelations 19, beginning in verse 7. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her was granted that she should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the white linen is the righteousness of saints. And he said unto me, Write, Blessed are they which are called into the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said unto me, These are the true sayings of Yah. See, she made herself beautiful by being obedient, by being humble, and by being faithful. And staying in the fire till he took her out. See, the coppersmith or the blacksmith is the one that takes the, the piece of iron out the fire. The iron don't jump out the fire by itself, does it? But we human beings, we want to jump out the fire. We think we have the choice to jump out the fire. But when we jump out the fire, we become a cold clinker. And, and we think we still got it made because it's the, the heat going down is so slow. We think, yeah, I still got it. I, I feel a little bit. But it's not like when you was in the fire. See? That's how we're going to get beautiful. That's what he wants to do, make you and me beautiful. And then we see the city coming down, prepared, as a, adorned as a bride. The beautiful new Jerusalem. She's coming down. Uh, Revelations 21, 1 through 3. Revelations 21, beginning in verse 1. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from Yahweh out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of Yahweh is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and Yahweh himself shall be with them, and be their Elohim. Wow. Does he love beauty? Now you understand why he said he makes all things beautiful in his time. Because he loves beautiful. He loves to make things beautiful. But it's the fire to keep some people away. But he's not trying to burn us up. He's just trying to get us hot enough 
so they can pound on them. That old blacksmith makes horseshoes and, and, and nails and all kind of stuff, but it's got to be hot, really, really hot. And then he forms that stuff. Then it's useful to somebody. That's how we become useful to the Father. When we go through the fire, we, we just read it. We can go through the fire and what? Not be burned. It just looks like it. If it, it, we think it is, it only looks like it. David said, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil for what? Hands up. He makes all things beautiful. For Yahweh is with me. He even said, he prepares me a table where? In the presence of mine enemies. <laughs> there you are. Got a big old steak, <laughs> eating good, and an enemy out there looking at you, starving. Because he prepared you a table. Because you let him make you beautiful. See what he's got in store for us? Well, look how he gets us there. That's the key. He takes us ways that we have no, we thought, man, why is he taking me this way? Why is he taking me that way? But don't worry about it. He knows the way. Remember, we just read about it. There's a path that the lion don't know and the fowls don't know. He knows. So, we got to get ready to get beautiful. Or as some people say, beautified. <laughs> I don't know if that's a word or not. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know me. Yeah. I'll come up with some stuff. <laughs> And so uh, that's what he, he's actually after us, is to make us beautiful. And we can see he made the bride beautiful. He decked her out. He decked Israel out. But what happened to Israel in Ezekiel chapter 16? She went to other lovers. She took the beauty that he had gave her. Sometimes we do that when we go outside of his will and way and doing something over here. That's why I said, don't put nothing between you and me. Zero. Because that's ugly to him. That's ugly to him. Amen? So, he makes all things beautiful in his time. Hands up. Y'all makes all things beautiful. Thank you, Abba, for your love and mercy toward us. We just give you thanks. You're making us beautiful. And we appreciate appreciate your son, Yahushua, Bashem, Yahushua, Amen.